Buenos días de Guatemala. Good morning, Earls fam. We are on the bus on our way to Antigua, which is like a two hour drive. Everybody wants to say hey, apparently. Everyone say hey. hey. <laughs> Hola. Buenos dias. Buenos dias. Alright guys, we have made it to Antigua and we're walking around. Uh, we are meeting up with Addison's parents um, and this, well we already met with his sister but she's doing part of the world race so she does like a mission work in 11 countries in 11 months and they just happen to be here. So we're meeting up with them right now I think at a restaurant they were having breakfast. Uh, but we'll see kind of what we end up doing today. Stopped at Cafe Condesa, have some breakfast that Ramiro treated us to. Wait, <laughs> Looks no. delish, Sorry. that is true. <laughs> All right guys, I'm giving you a little tour because this place is super duper cute. So we ate right there over there and we come back here. Oh, there's a little like tienda. Oh yes, Morgan, welcome to the garden area where you can eat outside. This is so cute, Harold would love this. And uh, farther down here, where the bathrooms are, there is a really cool fountain, but over here there's a bookstore. Continuing on, more seating area back here. Another outdoor area. Oh, there's like a little, I don't know what this is. It's so cool. little fountain out here and down by the bathrooms there's another little fountain back here such a cute little area yeah all right here we go guys into a little market this is so cool okay. there I am Selfie! <laughs> uh oh, honey. Gonna buy some baby clothes for us. Oh, so cute! So cute. Oh, the crosses! I need to get another cross for our cross wall. Y'all, it keeps going on and on. I bought one of these for my mom the first time and it broke <laughs> on the way back. Yeah, I made a purchase. I bought this cute little baby girl dress. I thought it was so cute. They're all laughing at me, but we saw it and I had to get it and it was less than $10 and I think Harold's gonna love it and I'm gonna love it. So we gotta pray that we'll have a girl. And Harold, honey. Lots of leather bags. If you were here, we would probably get one, but you're not here, so we're not gonna get one. Instead, we're buying baby clothes. <laughs>
Um, we are back in the village. I actually have no idea what time it is. I think it's probably like 8.30 or 9. Um, so I didn't film anything around 2 o'clock. So we were in um, Antigua and we went to go have lunch. And it was around 2 o'clock and there was Wi-Fi. And this is the first time that I have had Wi-Fi since I was here. I did get to go to the internet cafe, so um, I did get to post like the article that Harold Summit did and everything, and I did obviously get that text from Harold um, on Morgan's phone that he did Summit, but I haven't had Wi-Fi. Oh, here we go, let's see. Okay, my camera is struggling to focus. But so basically, I wasn't getting the updates. So finally, I had Wi-Fi, so I was getting so many updates. I had like 40 emails and like all these notifications on Facebook and like so many text messages. Um, and so I was, I was trying to read them and figure out kind of what was going on. Um, and I read the USA Today article, which, so mind you guys, all I knew was that Harold had summited. That was all that I knew and that he was safe and back at advanced base camp. That's all he told me. He said, you know, I summited and I'm safe. Um, and then I read the article and it said that he had lost his, like his goggles flew off. Um, and so him and his Sherpa were sharing the goggles and then his Sherpa got like snow blindness and then his Sherpa fell over a ridge, um, and they were tied together. So he would have fallen off. I think it was like something like 7,000 feet or something. Um, but Harold like grabbed the rope and like flung his body over so it, and like pulled the Sherpa back up um, and then that he got like minor frostbite. I think it's called like frost nip or something like that. Um, and so I'm just like reading all of that at, at once and like obviously like, you know, very emotional. So <sighs> that's why I didn't vlog anything else. I was just kind of taking in everything that was happening and we still, at, I'm not sure if they know now, but at that point hadn't um, heard any news yet from Chad and Dave. They were still, last I knew they were at um, Camp 1 at the top of the North Call. So they had finally made it back down, but they weren't at Advanced Base Camp yet. So we weren't exactly sure um, how they were doing because we knew that Dave had gotten the same stomach virus that Harold got, um, I think, when they were summoning or earlier at some point up the mountain. So it took them longer um, to get down. Um, and just like, I was just reading all these updates and like how five people had died since Friday, I was extremely emotional. So um, that's why I wasn't vlogging anything and I just kind of needed some time to myself. But um, then obviously we came back to the village and I have some footage from that. So um, the family that I have been talking about that I grew really close to the first time I was here and I saw them again, um, they came by to visit, so I'm gonna insert all that footage right now. It might not all make sense, um, cause it's not like, I didn't really explain what was going on. I just kind of filmed whatever I could. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of insert that in now. You guys, my boys are back. What's up, dog? Yeah, yeah. yes. <laughs> What's up, dog? Yeah. <laughs> What's up, dog? <laughs>
We are currently playing a card game with the boys where they draw a card out of the deck and then they have to do that many push-ups and they're loving it. Nadia? Como se dice te quiero mucho en quiche? King Kum Choi. King no. Kim Kum Choi? No Katua? No. ¿Qué es Katua? Katua en español. Te quiero. Te quiero. Sí. What did you just say? Te quiero mucho. Sí. Okay. Oh, Katua Kum Choi. Sí. Katua Kum Choi? No. <laughs> Do you say hola Harold? Hola hello. <laughs> <laughs> no. Nope. El nombre de, de su esposo es Harold. Oh, Entonces, hola, Harold. 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 Hello, Harold. Sí. Harold. 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 Or Harado. It's so hard Harold. to say. Harado. Harado. Sí. Harold. 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 Oh. Hola, Harold. <laughs> Say hola Harold. Elde. Hola Harold. Say. Say. Mario so. Aquí. Aquí. Say. What's up, dog? Say. What's up, Harold? What's up, Harold? Christopher's teaching them a card trick. Oh, Supra. Okay. Mira. Mira. Okay, Earl's fam, we are making spaghetti again with uh, yeah, Chef Sky over here, making sure the noodles are al dente, uh, which we didn't show you guys. We had spaghetti like two days ago um, because I didn't film it, so oops, but we're making it now. Look at them noodles, looking delish. Now we gotta add some sauce straight out the packet. That's how we do up in here, chantala. Fine herbs. Oh yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah, just pour it right on. Just, oh, oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right guys, we're having a little nighttime snack. We walked down to the local spot to have some pop. You're tickling my armpit. <laughs> Say hola. Uh, to have some papas fritas. So I think they're gonna make a s'more. I think they only have three and we have like 15 people feed. But I'm pretty excited about this. It's french fries in case you haven't figured it out. Making some french fries, you guys. <laughs> And the fries are served, my friends. Mm. Oh yeah, yummy. <laughs> I'm not completely sure uh, what we're gonna do for the rest of the night, if I'm gonna film anything else. I'm probably gonna shower. I think this is the fourth day um, that I haven't washed my hair or showered. So that's pretty disgusting. Um, so I, I need to go shower and stuff, but we're, the kids are still here. We're probably gonna hang out with them um, a little longer, but I am kinda emotionally drained from everything going on. Uh, I know you guys can't really tell now um but i just needed to to kind of deal with that on my own um 
I was just way too emotional to talk to you guys about it and to talk to anybody about it. But, oh, also something else was that uh, Ramiro, I don't think I even have mentioned it yet in a vlog. Uh, you might have seen him. He is the Guatemalan man who had uh, been walking around with us. He is our bus driver and he's been our bus driver with like the Wesley Foundation, which is the church I went to in college uh, for like so many years. And so really he's just like family to us. Um, and he is honestly like the greatest guy ever. So um, he's been spending the last couple of days with us, but he had to drive back um, today and pick up another group um, and do some stuff. But uh, he obviously saw that I was upset and crying and, and um, Logan was translating, you know, everything that was happening to him. So before he left, he said, you know, I want to pray for you. So we all like got in a circle and he, he prayed for me and he prayed for Harold and everything, which I just made me cry even more. But, you know, it's been, it's been confirmation to me like that. I know that I'm here for a reason, you know, I think my mom is a little confused, like, cause everyone's having a hard time with this, with, you know, just struggling with everything happening on Mount Everest, like Harold's parents and, you know, my mom and, you know, my cousins, like just all of that, um, because we, we love Harold so much. Um, and yeah, my mom was saying something like, you know, I thought it'd be hard for you being so far away, but, uh, in reality, you know, whether I'm here in Guatemala or I'm in the United States, I'm still really far away from Harold. Um, and for me at least, like, I kind of need a distraction and when I was finding all this stuff out, you know, I was like, I'm really actually thankful that I'm here versus being in the United States because I would have kind of found that stuff out without knowing that he was like, okay, or like knowing more information and that would have like just scared me so much and I don't think I could have handled it, uh, could have handled it very well. Um, and on top of that, running the social media um, and stuff prior, you know, I always knew everything first. Um, and so that meant I was informing everyone, you know, his family and, you know, my family and stuff. Um, so it became almost like everyone else's emotions were also on my shoulders, you know, cause it was like, I was dealing with it myself. Um, but then it was like, everyone was always checking in, like, is everything okay? Da, da, da. And I was already on edge, you know, just kind of like, I don't know things. Um, so I think with how intense everything happened that would have just made it so much harder on me uh versus being here i've kind of been able to at least distract myself some um and so i think you know obviously obviously god already knew um you know what would be best and it's really strange um i'm sorry it's having a hard time focusing and stuff but just throughout this whole thing i've had like a a good like piece about it and I think it's because I really <laughs> prayed so hard about this this whole thing but like knowing that this is something that I obviously can't handle and I don't have the strength to so it's like I prayed you know for God to give me the strength and to God to give me the peace um and he definitely has and I've felt that like overwhelming peace through all of this but of course there are those times um where it's like you know, as soon as I hear something, I get like super, super emotional and it just kind of all comes flooding. But then after I can calm down a little bit and just realize like, you know, like he's okay. Like, you know, ultimately it's like, he's safe, you know, yes, all that scary stuff happened and like he could have, you know, died or, you know, just everything that could have happened. Um, but God was there watching over him and it carried him, you know, down that mountain safe. And I put my faith in God and I trust God through all of it. Um, so at the same time, I, I still feel like it's weird. Like I feel like strong and like good, but I know it's not my own. You know, it's like, I know there's no way that I could handle this on my own at all. If it were just me, I would be the biggest mess ever. And like, yeah, at times I'm, I've been a wreck. Um, but I, I can feel, you know, God's the one who's carrying that weight, um, and, and totally lifting it off of my shoulders. So that's really cool. Um, but yeah, anyways, I think I'm going to go ahead and end the vlog here. Um, and if there's other footage that I film, I'll just put it in before this clip or something like that. But thanks for, you know, watching and following along and mostly thank you guys for praying. Um, it means so much to me more than you'll honestly ever know. Um, and I don't want to keep talking about it just because I know it'll make me more emotional, but, um, I just want to say thank you guys. So I love you and I'll see you guys tomorrow. So love God, love people, make a difference, be thankful.
Okay guys, so when we were walking <laughs> through the church, we saw one of the boys from this family that I grew really close to the first time that I was here and then the second time I was here I grew even closer to them. He was a baby when I first met him. He was like the girls would 